Hi, everybody. Hi. Oh, God, doing the little thing there. Okay, we're on. So, um, oh my gosh, I just came in from doing, oh my gosh, my head's cut off. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Let me try this. Up a little bit. Okay, let's try that. I don't know if my camera moved or what, but anyways, okay, that's good enough. Hi, Minik. Oh my gosh, good morning. Okay, so I just returned from gleaning, and um, so we were doing the, um, the fruit picking, and I forgot water again. I always forget water because I keep the lovely little alkalinizing water pitcher over here most of the time. And, um, but anyway, so we're going to add a little bit of water to our pot here and we are, um, yeah, busy, busy gleaning and preserving and Darlene, hi, good morning. I missed you guys yesterday. So, um, yeah, so I just finished from picking blackberries and picking plums and doing plums and oh my God. I think plums are worse than beets or anything, and my hands are all stained from the plums and not so much blackberries, but plums really stain your hands, and I'm not sure why, but they do. They must have something in there that's super stainy. So, uh, yeah, so super busy with that. So we're going to start with our onions today and make a um, beautiful portobello, uh, kind of like a little um, stir-fry sauce, sort of. We'll see how it turns out. Things tend to change around here by the minute, so you never know. We're going to start with this. So, um, yeah, so for sure, it's been busy. Hope you guys have been keeping well. It's, um, yeah, it's been an interesting, super busy week. I've been out gleaning almost every morning. And so, um, actually, I have been out every morning. Um, and I, I somehow double booked myself yesterday. <laughs> so I did two, two jobs yesterday. I, I couldn't, uh, couldn't not be there because I had uh, committed myself. Usually I go gleaning from nine to 10 and then I come back and I get ready to hang out with you guys every morning and do some recipes and stuff. And uh, anyway, so um, yeah. So anyway, it's been a super fun week the uh the, the um skins hanging together today <laughs> i don't know i guess i didn't didn't um cut it all the way through but that's okay so i'm just going to score it one way and this is kind of the way i usually do my onion score it one way and then score it the other way and actually speaking of score i um oh my head's falling off again do you guys care if you can't see the top of my head? I've got like wet hair day too because um, because when I was gleaning out there, uh, the uh, it was really it was warm. It's warm, and I'm so happy that it's so warm out that that um, was it yesterday afternoon. I went out at two o'clock to um, to do a little bit of. Um, fruit picking and it was so hot that I had to wet my head down because I am a little susceptible to um, heat stroke and so let me know if the camera keeps dropping down <laughs> oh my gosh oops okay get this on high heat and so anyways yeah so it was so hot yesterday and I have had heat stroke once and I think once you've had it I guess pretty bad. Uh, I don't know, but I, I seem to be more susceptible to the heat. And um, I'm going to have to move that camera. <laughs> and so anyways, yeah, so I like, had to wet my hair down yesterday too. So, okay, I'm going to move the camera. <laughs> Try and tighten it up a little bit. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's get up here and tighten it a little bit better. How's that? A little bit better. The other thing, I was so busy this morning, I forgot to charge my phone. So I plugged it in when I got back, and I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that um, 
I don't lose you guys because I, I think I've got like, you know, 25% battery left. So these are the beautiful um, banana peppers that I got at the, um, at the beautiful um, market. And so I'm going to add some of these guys. And of course your peppers have, um, uh, you know, really vitamin C. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. There's something else that's, that's very special about peppers. Um, oh gosh, vitamin A, uh, folate. That, I said that yesterday. To, oh no, no, I wasn't here yesterday. I said that um, the other day. Folate, which is really, really good. So, um, and it has also fiber and iron. And so peppers are actually really good for you. And especially if you can grow your own or if you can get them like this from the farmer's market and they're organic and not GMO. It's like super awesome. And uh, I'm right about something. Oh my gosh. Anyways, uh, yeah, yeah. It's really, it, I may not be able to see the comments today because my battery's running low, so my screen is very dark. And so I'm like, <laughs> I can't see very well at the best of times um, because I'm old. <laughs> oh gosh, and I think my camera's dropping down again. Technical difficulties this morning, but that's okay. That's what we're here for. We are here to have fun and um, experiment with healthy recipes. And so these are portobello mushrooms, which are also very um, healthy. And, um, you know, the mushrooms have man uh, manganese and all kinds of really healthy things. Today, I'm not using um, any super medicinal mushrooms because I didn't really think about it. I was so busy picking fruit and then dealing with all the plums and so so far I've made um, plum chutney three batches uh, or three yeah three canning batches that I canned with the plum chutney and I made the plum shrub which you guys got to see the plum shrub which is super awesome and um, that turned out really well and then plum syrup and uh, and now I have like a lot of apples like a lot of apples so um, you know what I'm thinking of doing because we did a pear pick so um, I'm thinking of combining the apples and the pears to make like an apple pear sauce because I just am not too much of a fan of straight up applesauce although I might make it anyway just because I have so many and um, I might not use all these and remember, I always say that whenever you're cooking, you know, set something aside to use a little bit later because it's always handy to have something, um, you know, extra or different to have in your in your fridge uh, to add to another recipe. So I'm going to take like a quarter of this mushroom and just set it there because that's more than enough for two people, even though these will cook down. Um, but anyway, back to the apples and the pears. Um, yeah, I think I'll make an apple pear sauce. And hey, Jane, good morning. Hi. <laughs> and uh, oh, yeah. So the zucchini, I'm going to add some of my garden zucchini. And I am going to trim these seeds out just a little bit. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't mind a few. They, uh, you won't even notice them in here. So what this is going to be is a... Um, kind of a sweet and sour, well, sweet and spicy um, stir fry. And what we'll do is kind of, you could eat it on your own if you want, or you could add it um, to rice, or you could put it on pasta or something like that. Um, <clears throat> maybe if I move over here a little bit. Oh no, that didn't help. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys. I know. This is, I'm just crazy today. Today's a crazy day. And actually, I heard that... Um, maybe I'll move closer. Um, I heard that because... Uh, uh, what was it? Yesterday or, or the day before was the full moon? And I have heard of a lot of people when I was talking to the gleaners. Um, a lot of people haven't been sleeping lately uh, in the last week. And it probably is, you know, stress, of course, but from the world events, but, um, but I think, you know, with the full moon and everything, like there's just been a lot of energy 
and because uh, I usually sleep pretty good, and I just was like full on awake all night um, two nights ago. So I don't know if anyone else experienced that or has been having different than normal <laughs> sleeping issues. I know a lot of people have sleeping issues, but you know, just worse than normal the last couple of few nights. And um, and the moon does seem to be pulling really strong. And I, when I say that, I have absolutely no idea what I mean because I I um, I have studied a lot of energy, you know, like spiritual, metaphysical uh, studies and and um, traditions and modalities and all that kind of thing. But astrology is not one of them that I've studied very well. So I don't know a whole lot about, you know, the moons and the new moons and, and um, a lot of the witchery. I would love to learn that. It's actually more, you know, earthy paganism slash hippie <laughs> studies of the earth, right? The earth and how it rotates and how, um, you know, working with the, the crops and the land and everything. And uh, I have done some of that, but not a lot. So I really don't... Um, you know, I don't know much about the metaphysical or scientific part of the full moon or why people are crazier during the full moon, but I know they are. And um, not often, I mean, not always, but often. So there we go. Anyway, oh my God, I would like totally on the other subject. So many things, fun things to do. Okay, let's add our stuff. <clears throat> I do have, um, I opened up a can of pineapple. Um, you know, I, I, it's nice to just have it on hand in case you want to add something sweet and, and, you know, kind of sweet and sour, but we're going to add spice to it too. So I am going to grab my spoon here. I should actually have another little table here for the silverware, but um, the dog likes to sleep right there. So, <laughs> so we're trying to please everybody around here. Okay, so I'm going to add like a heaping tablespoon of pineapple to, because I do really love pineapple, and I bought a fresh one the other day, and it just wasn't, um, maybe it's not the season, I really don't know much about uh, when pineapple season is best, you know, like by the time we get it. So anyways, uh, we're going to add that. We're going to add some cayenne to spice things up, so the spicy part, quite a bit of cayenne. Um, and, uh, um, well, might as well add the, the Celtic sea salt now and get that going. And um, la 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 la, some pepper, of course. And I am going to add, just to bring out a little bit of a different flavor, I'm going to add a little bit of cinnamon, am I? My phone's falling down again. Okay, where am I? I'm here. Okay. Teensy bit, just a teensy bit to bring out different flavors of the cinnamon. And um, I bring out flavors of the cinnamon. Yeah. Uh, garlic. We're going to do the, the granulated garlic. Actually, no, this is the minced garlic. I always get confused. And, and uh, it just smells really interesting, putting the garlic on the pineapple. It's really uh, going to have a, a really good kick to it. And then um, I am going to add the minced garlic as well. So, um, la, la, la. oh, and you should never do this. Never, ever. It's not really steaming yet, but you should never take your spice jar and put it over a steaming dish because you'll get moisture in here and that'll be very bad. So, um, yeah, I'm not supposed to do that, but it's just starting to cook now because I, I forgot to turn it on earlier. Oh my gosh. Okay, so the other thing I wanted was, there it is there, is the um, paprika. So we're going to add a little bit of the, um, this is, is not the smoked paprika because I don't really want that flavor. This is like a medium paprika. And so we'll just add a little bit of that like, I don't know, a third of a teaspoon. How's that? Okay, so we're doing that, and then um, I was going to tell you guys something, I can't remember what it was now. Uh, what was I going to tell you? Okay, so we 
talked about some of the ingredients and I had a thought in my head and what was that oh yeah the zucchini I'm so happy to have um, so many little zucchinis it's super awesome and um, yeah <laughs> it is very interesting uh, so zucchinis are super awesome and and they've got the potassium and the manganese so I'm happy to have so many great zucchinis because uh, I've, I've not been um, much of a gardener over the years I was I was too busy you know I just was doing so many events and I was hosting a lot of uh, workshops and um, health events and working with a lot of people uh, with meetups and meetings and and teaching and all that kind of thing and I was just so busy I never really had the chance to really go into full-on gardening until this year like really garden like 24 7 and um, so I'm super happy to have all the zucchinis and I, I have my big carrot I should go get I should turn the thing up so you can see my head my head <laughs> and grab my big carrot <laughs> to show you I'll go get my big carrot while this goes down a little bit. And I'll move this camera so you can actually see what's going on. <laughs> I picked it the other day. Okay, let's see. Move you up just a little. Oh, gosh. Don't. I don't want to. Okay, that's probably good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Technical difficulties. Now all we have to do is not have my phone die. See my carrot? I'm so happy. It's a really, it's a really lovely carrot. I'm so happy because I'm, I'm always, we are higher up here and I'm always slow. Um, everything that happens in the garden, as far as blooming, is like two weeks behind the rest of town. So, um, and then our soil is really not the best for gardening and so it has to be super worked to make anything happen. Because uh, we have a lot of clay and a lot of shale, and so everything really needs to be brought in. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so when I get the vegetables, I'm like super excited, and I'm really happy to have uh, that big carrot. And I planted, I think, four different varieties this year, so I don't know what kind that is. It's the short, fat ones. <laughs> Probably called something. Okay, so, so you guys can see that this is um, turning into... Um, like a little bit of a thick sauce and um and it's taking on the color if you can see it the color of a teriyaki sauce which is super awesome so that's coming um partly from the portobellos because the portobellos often do kind of dye things you know a darker color so so it's gonna it's going to um probably not look as as um, bright and colorful as I would like because the portobellos tend to make things darker. Anyways, um, that's about it. So I'm just going to, I'm going to um, cook this enough so that the mushrooms are cooked because the mushrooms should be cooked because there's something in them called chitin. And the chitin, hi Amy, good morning. Um, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, the mushrooms have something called chitin in it, C-H-I-T-I-N, and it, it um, makes them less digestible. It has a digestive inhibitor thing. I can't remember the exact name, but anyways, the mushrooms should be cooked. And of course, especially these portobellos because they're so big. Um, but yeah, so apparently it's not a really a good idea to eat the mushrooms raw. So I just want to cook these down until, you know, until they're kind of tender. So we'll go on to our next recipe, and I have to, um, oh, I was going to tell you something else, and I think it was, um, oh yeah, about the thing that I bought, but I'm not using it today, so you'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> I bought a new gadget, and I am really, it's not really new, I have, I have an old style one, but um, <clears throat> nothing like keeping you guessing. I remember the other thing that I forgot to put in, I'm looking right at it. Whenever they're right in front of me, I don't seem to see them. Kind of like, I know, I mean, honestly, I don't mean this in a mean way, but it, it is a realistic uh, observation that I have found happen over and over again for many, many people, is that um, I couldn't see this sitting right in front of me, but I, I know that guys especially have a hard time finding anything that's right in front of them, like ketchup and socks and things like that. So, um, 
And I mean that in the most affectionate way. I think it's ever so cute. <laughs> but <laughs> it's true. And now I'm getting the same way, right? I didn't even see it. Oh, I didn't tell you what I added. I added the coconut um, sugar, uh, just a teensy bit of coconut sugar. Even though the pineapple is a little sweet, um, you know, I do want it to be kind of a, a sweet and sour uh, dish, right? So, um, yeah, so that's why. And uh, it's the, with the cayenne, I added quite a bit of cayenne, so it should have that little bit of a bite. And then, um, you know, the peppers are just sweet peppers, so they're not going to do anything um, super spicy. But anyway, I'm going to turn this off and, because I will be cooking this up later for dinner, but it looks pretty good so far. And what I might do later on too, which I encourage you to do if you have any, is um, add some, some greens to it, like some, um, well, in my case, I have collards. Uh, you can add collards, kale, that kind of thing. Just slice it up really fine and put it on just before you cook it so that you have like just a steamed green because those are, you know, so important for the digestive system. They're so full of chlorophyll, they've got vitamin K, they've, you know, they're like a, a high nutrient dense foods. The greens, um, the kale, the collards, um, spinach, all those things, and they're full of magnesium too, which is so important. The magnesium's really important for your muscle function. Um, magnesium helps with headaches, um, helps with heart palpitations, like it's just, it helps you to absorb calcium. It's, I, magnesium is so important. So anytime you can add those um, leafy greens to your meal and just gently steam them down, just enough to break down the cell walls a little bit, it's really uh, super, super beneficial to do that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is super fun. Um, I just have to remember what it is. Okay, uh, I remember, I remember what it is, and I even remembered a bowl to do it in. We're doing good. All right, so, <laughs> what we're going to do here, okay, I, it's too big of a bowl, but that's okay, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. We're going to, um, we're going to make a little dessert, and this is like really, really good. And I might do it again because I do want a video of it because it is so good, I like a separate video. Um, I'm going to grab the, my, my wooden spoon and some, oops, knocking things over here. Um, oh, and, and I'm not sure if this is still um, valid, but uh, they have coconut oil on sale half price at uh, quality foods. Not this brand and not this big, but it's half price. So anybody in Port Alberni or that has the quality foods in your town, head over there and buy some because it is half price. But anyway, I'm going to use the rest of this last bit of coconut oil. And um, I'm going to add more than that because this is really, really good. Um, I'm going to say... You know, it, you might as well use a cup full because, anyway, I mean, I won't spend too much time trying to clean the jar too much because I can do that on my own. But, um, yeah, so a, a half cup, a cup, it depends on how much you want. But this is pretty much a cup of the coconut oil. And thankfully, right now, it's super warm in here. And so um, it's very soft, which is helpful. So if you're making this in the winter and your house is cold, you are going to have to get it to, to where you can mush it down. So that's, yeah, that's, that's going to be unfortunate when the weather gets cold is that this will be, um, you just, that extra step, like maybe um, stick the coconut oil on top of your fridge or something where it's just softer. So I'm going to add the cocoa. This is the pure organic cocoa. And um, for that much coconut oil, I'm going to say... I don't know, let's see, how about um, three he heaping tablespoons, so one, and try not to, uh, try not to breathe it all back up, try not to breathe the powder because then I'll start coughing and we all know how that goes, I'm so susceptible, um, okay, so that's the cocoa, I'm going to try and mix this without blowing the cocoa all over the place like I usually do. Um, we're going to add a little bit of vanilla, 
I'm just looking at all this stuff here. What am I on? Okay, I, I have way too many things on my table. Okay, a little bit of vanilla. And this is like, this is going to taste honestly like a turtle. Like a, like a chocolate turtle. You know, turtles. Really, really good. Okay, so I am going to add some maple syrup because that is 100% cocoa and it is very bitter. So you might need... Um, A quarter of a cup at least and then do it to taste like I don't mind if I, I love bitter chocolate so I don't mind if mine tastes kind of bitter and um, so we're gonna put this together without I have to be careful because to mix that cocoa in because if it splashes up and I inhale it I'll start coughing so I'm gonna aim it towards you guys and get it all mixed together and there we go we're doing pretty good getting that mixed and like i say it's so much easier if the if the coconut um coconut oil is soft okay so this is kind of similar to the other recipes except that we have the maple syrup and what we're looking for is like the caramely flavor of the maple syrup so you may want to add more and then um typically your turtles are made with pecans and so I don't really have enough pecans, so I'm adding walnuts as well. But you just dump your nuts in. And then, uh, so you've got your nuts and your cocoa and your maple syrup. And at this point, um, you know, I, I do, um, do want to have it taste caramely. And one of the other things you can do is what we did last week is uh, we made the caramel sauce, which was super awesome with the date. So you could do that. You could soak some dates and add that to it. And, or you could make the caramel sauce and add it to it, which would be super awesome too. You could put it all together in here. Um, but anyway, that would make it caramely. But I did it like this uh, the other day, and it was really um, quite turtley tasting. So I'm going to give that a little taste, see if I have enough maple syrup in it. Mmm. That's really good. It's not very caramely, though. I know it's very good. So I'm going to add a little bit more maple syrup. And then, um, like I say, if you added the dates, that would be good, too. But um, I wonder if you could soak the dates and put them through the blender so they're smoother, because I just don't want chunky pieces of dates in here. I'm going to add a little more, so that's like, I don't know, third of a cup, half of a cup, whatever you want to add for the maple syrup. And actually, I'm going to add some more vanilla, too. And don't we love how I just kind of wing it, because I don't, I don't measure much, and we just go by, we just fly by the seat of our pants around here when it comes to cooking. It's like a little this, a little that, and change it up, and add more, and take some away, and turn it into soup, and... A totally different recipe and I can see something there with my um... oh wow today's happy hour is three liters of peaches half rice woohoo I'll head over there that is awesome wow yeah I didn't get many peaches this time and there is a recipe that I want to do with you guys with peaches so I will definitely head over there and thank you for the news announcement because that is awesome and hopefully the coconut hey speaking of that okay this is really good and i'm sorry for everybody on my youtube channel around the world that is listening and that we're talking about local things but super important <laughs> if you go to no frills they have 32 rolls of toilet paper on for half price <laughs> oh my god let's just not do that again although we might right i don't know but it, it is it's like the the uh uh, 32 double rolls for 10 bucks. It's that's cheap. So, um, luckily, I'm not in too much of a panic for toilet paper, but, anyways, that is a good thing to know. Okay, so here we have the that's why I need to make another video for this, is because I'm talking about local things. Okay, so here we have this lumpy chocolate. Um, I added more vanilla, didn't I? I'm distracting myself. I, I need a clean spoon. Um, Oh, let's do a fork. Okay. I'm pretty sure I added more vanilla for the caramel flavor. Okay, let me try that. 
Mm. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take these a uh, little, a little lump, and um, I forgot, but so I have to do it later, but uh, just drop it onto a piece of wax paper or parchment paper and stick it in the freezer and let it solidify. I mean, it will in the fridge as well. Um, it'll make the little uh, turtley drops, but um, if you put it in the fridge, it'll take longer. So if you put it in the freezer, it's like, you know, less than five minutes and you've got your nice turtle. Uh, and then you can put it in the fridge or whatever. And if, if you have a cool place, you can leave it out. But if, like today, um, it's going to be pretty warm in the house. And so you would want to keep these cool. Otherwise, they will they will turn back into this consistency. So these are the, um, the turtles. And maybe we'll switch it up into trying it with the dates and just see what that turns out like. The other thing I'd like to do, uh, because I love the spice so much, is add some cayenne to it. Um, so it's like a spicy hot turtle. And, uh, oh, that sounds terrible. A spicy hot turtle. But I think that would be really interesting. Um, you can add things like cinnamon, you can add coconut, you can add all kinds of things. Um, but I particularly really like this uh, as a base, and I think we, we should try it with dates. So the other thing, that's the second thing, that's dessert for tonight dinner for tonight. I, I'm going to actually do this over rice. And so I have to show you, this is super exciting. I have bay leaves, real bay leaves. And this, these were gifted to me by a, um, an amazing person who sells at the farmer's market. And now I'm going to try and guess, uh, the name of the booth, but I'm pretty sure it's called the Alberni Farmers Collective or Alberni Collective. Anyway, Kirsty Allen, and um, that's the person who uh, gifted me these bay leaves, and they're real live bay leaves from a tree. So typically, you know, people think, okay, well, I'll dry my bay, dry my bay leaf, and I'll add it to spaghetti sauce or soups or stews or or that kind of thing. But um, the bay leaves are actually like if you get them live and fresh like this, and you chew on it, it tastes like eucalyptus. And so, um, and so it, uh, what, you, what we don't know is that it does have a, um, it does have a compound actually called eucalyptol. So, because when I tasted it, and I had never tasted a live, uh, real fresh bay leaf. And when I tasted it, I was like, oh my gosh, it tastes like eucalyptus, it must be medicinal. And so it's not something that I've really worked with before. But when I researched it, I was just like, oh my gosh. And I've never had an abundance of them either. Like, I've just never had an abundance of um, fresh bay leaves. But I would like to get a bay tree, bay, laurel bay leaf tree now that I've seen and um, tasted the magnificence. Um, so they are, um, they also have a lot of anti-inflammatory activity uh, because of the, the medicine in them. So I am rendering these down along with all the other things that are turning into the oil uh, and putting them in oil and I'll be making a salve because they have such anti-inflammatory properties, um, you know, good for pain. Uh, if you drink them as a tea, it also has the antiviral uh, properties as well. Um, it, it's, it's actually very um, soothing and calming as a tea. So, you know, I don't know where to tell you to get fresh bay leaves, but if you can, um, you should, and maybe we should just all go to the nursery and see if they have any and bring one home, because I'm pretty impressed. It's like a super awesome um, med medicine, as well as being used for cooking, especially when it's fresh like that, and so with that, with that eucalyptus, um, I can't remember what the actual name of the, um, you know, chemical constituent is, or whatever, uh, but it's like a eucalyptus, so it's antiviral, and it's good for the throat and the respiratory system. Like, I knew that right away. As soon as I tasted it, I was like, oh, man, this would be really good for, for a sore throat. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, cool. All right, that's awesome. Yeah, it's Christy Ellen. And I'm pretty sure it's called Alberni Collective, and they're, they're at the Spirit Square Farmer's Market. I do know that. Amazing vegetables, amazing um, all kinds of, I, I mean... I went and saw the garden, it's just like, you know, the, the chard and the kale and the, everything is just like abundantly, absolutely beautiful, fresh, organic, um, awesome. 
So yeah, so I'm pretty impressed with this. So I'll be making, uh, I am, am and did, I made a tincture already with the bay leaves. So I'll be drinking this as a medicine, like by the drop, not drinking like a, you know, it'll be by the drop because this is very concentrated uh, tincture. Um, but you can put them in tea and drink the tea. Very good and healthy for you. And I'm going to be making, um, putting it in the oil. So I am going to be making many salves with it. And I think what I'll do, uh, this will be a really nice addition to the salves that I'm making. Um, like I have the, uh, the one that's good for gout, the one that's good for muscle aches and pains. Uh, that's the one with the wall lettuce in it. And so kind of combining these different things with the different properties. Um, but there's one for edema and swelling that's been working really good. I've been working with a client uh, who had an ankle broken in like 12 places and a bunch of um, pins and stuff in it. And so there's a lot of pooling and swelling at the ankle. And so this particular salve that I put together is um, bringing the energy up and, and reducing the swelling because it's increasing the circulation. I did add cayenne to that. So, so what I do are custom blends of, um, of salves, tinctures based on that person's uh, health needs. And, um, and I'm going, I have a lot of essences too, which I've been working on, um, you know, specific things to help us with the anxiety this winter. So, uh, essences and, and um, aromatherapy and, and uh, combinations of essential oils. And so those will be custom made depending on, depending on what kind of stress you're going through. I know I'm working with a few teachers right now and um, I really, uh, yeah, I kind of really um, feel for all of the anxiety that's going on now with the kids going back to school and it's a real dilemma. So anyways, I am making essences and aromatherapy to help with that uh, emotional mm, stress. <laughs> anyways, okay, so that's it. I am going to continue making tinctures and oils all day today. Um, I might go out in the garden a little bit, but, uh, but basically I am going to um, be making medicine for the rest of the day. And yeah, so that's awesome. Kirsty is, is amazing. Um, yeah, really incredible, beautiful person. And so, um, um, yeah. Anyway, I encourage you to visit the booth. Um, they're there on Saturday mornings and um, get some fantastic uh, vegetables and uh, I mean to my understanding I think she only has one bay leaf tree so you're not likely to get some bay leaves but uh, but let's all go to the nursery and pick up a little bay leaf tree <laughs> okay we'll see you guys tomorrow morning at 11 uh, let me know in the comments if there's anything specific you want me to, to um, play with together with you you know create uh, learn and all that kind of thing thank you Darlene that's so awesome I always feel like I'm so not professional, but you know what? It's just really, really fun. And, uh, and I love that you guys hang out with me and we do this and explore good food and good medicine. Okay, see you guys tomorrow, tomorrow morning at 11. Have a really good day.